it's a nice overcast and dry evening and I'm here at Lound Wood you might recognize the, the view down the side of Lound Wood here down to the village of Ekrin in the valley or at the bottom of the hill clouds good helps keep the temperature up if you're moth trapping of course and that cloud helps to keep in the heat that radiates up from the ground after the sun's gone down but there's very little chance of that because to be honest we've not seen the sun today and you'd never dream that it was June it's an easterly wind again and it remains incredibly dry I can't remember the last time we had any rain but the temperature is cool and people are also reporting a lack of moths and certainly when I've travelled to and from Clipson Old Quarter on a night time and it's about three miles from Clipson Old Quarter where I parked to home I'm lucky if I see two moths in that distance so it'll be interesting to see what we get here this evening common swifts are already flying low over the grass but how much else will we fly tonight? It's the 6th of June, although to be honest, it feels more like the 6th of March. Well, the old generator is fired up and running on economy, so it's even quieter. I can't believe how quiet it is compared to the old generator that's long since been left at the knacker's yard, so to speak. Very impressed with this new generator, I must admit. But good numbers of common swift are in. Many have settled down. Common swift are always about the first species to come in because they start flying low over the grass around dusk anyway and very quickly will come as soon as the light is fired up and they'll stop coming in pretty soon and other moths will start to appear. The only other species that I've got noted down or to note down is brimstone of which there's been two flying along the hedge here. So we'll see what comes in. And while it's quiet, here is a better marked common swift than what I showed you on the last video. That was quite poorly marked, but the markings do vary considerably. And I'm checking these now that they've started to settle down. I'm check checking these because there is another swift that is around this time, and it's gold swift, but the markings are different. But if one comes in, I'll be trying to get some footage of it it does occur in this particular area of Ekrin we used to get it quite regular in the center of Loudwood but none has appeared yet but species that could drop in fairly sharpish well there's the general vista I'm standing just at the entrance of Loudwood I've not checked the temperature yet in the temperature just dropped down and find its level but I suspect it's already no more than 11 I think it's forecast to eventually drop down to about 8 or 9 and it'll only be the cloud that keeps it as high as that but hopefully we may get some warmer nights towards the weekend and then we'll be going back up and doing another trapping session at missing car in the north of the county but at the moment it's still just common swifts and a brimstone just fluttering around left of the light and just coming back in towards the light. Apart from that, not a deal, but I do have a new flask. And as moth trappers will know, it's disaster on a number of occasions. If you drop the flask and smash it, just as you've stepped out of the car or switched the generator and the light on, or you forget the flask or you have a flask which I did that doesn't believe in keeping anything hot 
and just allows it to go lukewarm after about an hour so it's nice to have a hot drink it would be nice to get some moss but it's still early days or early nights as that brimstone again tries to come in towards the light you can tell brimstones because you can see the beautiful sulfur yellow of them in the MV light from quite a distance away in fact there's another one just coming in now or going into the light so that's two brimstones so at least we've got some moths coming in you may well think he's struggling for moths here so he's got to talk about a brimstone but when you actually look and take the time out to look at a brimstone you can see why I'm going to talk about it and if truth be told there aren't many moths on the sheet that I can talk about but why not talk about this exceptional moth another case of a moth that suffers from the fact that it's common very common found everywhere one of those species guaranteed to be flying around your garden on a night time during the flight period but that shouldn't detract from the absolute beauty that this species is it's the entire opposite of most people's perception of moths anyone who's not interested in moths think that they're all big brown and hairy and fly around your kitchen light and will bite you at the first opportunity but they're not like that this is an absolute beauty could be a butterfly in disguise to be honest and many people when they see these during the daytime they happen to come across one often think that's exactly what it is it's just a stunning moth and aptly named because of that beautiful brimstone yellow now when this moth first dropped in it confused me confused me so much that I had to resort to the book to check this because this is a species that I'm used to seeing considerably darker and duller than this one is but it is just a willow beauty a very common moth get good numbers of these at home throughout the year it's one of the commonest moths that i get in the garden but normally it's never as light as this i can't remember seeing one as light as this so i'm going to take this home and photograph this normally it's considerably darker and drabber it has little going for it to be honest but it is a willow beauty this one is actually living up to the name an attractive thing and a common moth that you'll get certainly at home in decent numbers during the course of a year it has can have certainly three broods in some favorable years so that's willow beauty which is dropped in And what about this then? This is a moth that I've been hoping to show you. Well, since last year to be honest. And this is an absolutely magnificent male lime hawk moth. Never get many lime hawk moths, or never have had many lime hawk moths here at Loudwood. As the name suggests, the caterpillar feeds on lime. So in suburban areas of towns and cities, this is a common hawk moth. Here at Egrin, it's less common, and the food plant to the larva here at Lound Wood is more than likely going to be cherry. There is some cherry. But what a moth! It's not our largest of hawk moths, but when you look at this, it takes some beating. And in its own way, its markings and attractiveness make it the equal of species like oleander hawk moths that it does in my mind this is another one of those moths that suffers from being common this appears to be a one antenna in a male i think it's lost its right hand antenna as we look at it but what an absolute beauty just look at that common say you'll get this if you run a trap at home in a suburban or even urban area and the larva can often be seen crawling down lime trees in late summer 
it's an absolute stonker of a species. And another example of how moths aren't all brown and horrible. Well, we had a little flurry of new species dropping into the light. But it, overall, you would never say that this was June. I know it's early June, but I can't remember an early June night as quiet as this one. But we have had in Cetaceous Hebrew character, which is a moth. It always seems out of place this time of year, but it is double brooded and it's the second brood of which you tend to get fed up of seeing it. It's more of a, a late summer and autumn species and occurs in much higher numbers in autumn than it does this time of year. And the individuals that you get in autumn tend to be a little bit smaller than the one that's been in here, but it's an attractive noctuid. And say we've had the treble lines, Lime hawk moth is a highlight, and there's been a common pug and a second willow beauty, which arrives pretty much within minutes of the first one arriving, and is similarly lightly coloured. But it's just so quiet, even diptera wise, there's very few diptera, a couple of parasitic wasps, and a couple of small cream flies unbelievably quiet it's hard to even see anything flying around very disappointing but this will no doubt be a low point for many species this year I'm sure in a case of building those numbers back up to previous levels well here's a moth I was going to say it's nicely settled but it's starting to warm its wings up now so no doubt it'll be off shortly but this is a treble line it's a beautiful moth the ground colour is a warm sort of buffish brown colour and then those three obvious name giving lines across the wings it's not a species I can remember recording many much here at Ecrin might only be one record of this so I'm quite pleased with this particular record. I do get it regular at home and I believe that many sites or people trapping at sites in suburban areas of towns and cities are likely to get this moth and I think we're going to have takeoff but we are getting more and more species coming in. A fairly distant scenic view of the trapping scene very very quiet and to be honest it feels every degree of the 10 degrees it might just be slightly under now already and we're approaching 23 30. this won't be a long trapping session i may well pack up in another quarter of an hour i'll see how it goes but you would never ever dream that it was June, either number of moth wise, number of species of moths, or more certainly you wouldn't think it was June going by temperature. I can't remember anything like this, to be honest. So few moths. But over the next few weeks, it should pick up as more species come on to the wing. We are running a little bit late this year, certainly still over a week later than in 2022 20, and previous years from what I can make out. So the species that might be expected to be on the wing now don't appear to be here. A very very small trap list at the moment. Well, we've been here two hours, and this scene 
isn't reminiscent of moth trapping in the UK in June, at least. Not one I've experienced before. There is a cool breeze here occasionally, not at this level, but it's obviously stopping a lot of things from being really active. But a disappointing session. We have had a couple of nice moths to look at, but there should be a lot more insect activity around a mercury vapour light than what you're looking at now. And in fact, a couple of the moths that you are looking at are moths that have been in for a while and have started to become active again. But I don't believe it's worth really carrying on. There's no signs. Normally you can just get a sign. A moth will drop in at some time. You think, ah, well, I'll just stay out a bit longer. I've not had that tonight, and I don't think with the temperature as it is, it's down to 10. I don't think it's worth stopping any longer. I don't think I'm going to gain many more species. I think my effort will be better saved until the evening temperatures and nighttime temperatures are higher, which hopefully it may well be in a few more days' time. So, it's pack up time. So that's it. A somewhat disappointing June the 6th trapping session. Let's hope for better weather and warmer temperatures next time we trap.